So hello everybody, my name is Nico Kruber and I'm from the Tsuza Institute of Berlin and as already mentioned I want to talk about Scalaris a bit, our transactional key value store. Um, the work I'm presenting has been done in conjunction with my colleague uh, Michael Berlin and this is what I'm going to talk about a bit. So at first I'm going to give you a brief introduction to Scalaris, show a bit um, its features and scalability. <coughs> then I'm going to present you uh, our demo application which we wrote for the key value store uh, featuring okay, thank you. transactions uh, which is a wiki, wiki clone but not using MySQL but uh, Scalaris. And then I'm going to talk about a bit um, optimization of this data model and how it scales. So first of all, I'd like to differentiate Scalaris a bit from the other key value stores or relational databases. So in the relational database world, we have well relations or tables, most often conceived. And most NoSQL stores, as well as Scalaris, uses uh, a mapping of key to values. Well, Value could be anything, um, some call documents and have some structure in it. We basically don't care. Um, in the relational database model, we then have uh, SQL or SQL as a query language for selecting values um, and updating them. In the NoSQL world, there's lots of different query language mostly propri proprietary APIs. Um, so th the most common operations though are uh, select on a single key or a set of keys as well as updates and inserts which is what Scalar supports. Um, well NoSQL stores are scalable, inherently scalable normally and offer some sort of fault tolerance by using replication so like replicating those key value pairs and in case of failures you can always read from replicas or write to them. Um, relational databases have joins where well, we don't have them normally and they have transactions. Most NoSQL stores don't have transactions and only offer you eventual consistency and this is the main differentiator of Scalaris key value store. Um, we do have transactions and we give it strong consistency. So short facts about Scalaris and its implementation. It's written in Erlang, um, not the most common programming language. Uh, there's around 23,000 lines of code. Only 2,000 of them, around 2,000, are used for transactions. And because most of the world doesn't use Erlang, we have several APIs like uh, Java to access Scalaris or Python and Ruby or generic HTTP interface. And this is where you can have a look at the code. It's all open source. So uh, I told you that Scalaris scales. Well, this is meant to be proof of that. We have two benchmarks. The leftmost one is um, reading values, arbitrary values. And it's run on um, a set of different nodes, like from starting from one node to uh, 32. And as you can see, well, it does scale, but this is just read on a single key. On the right side, this is a real transaction. There's an increment, like I'm, I'm reading a value, I'm adding um, an integer to it, and writing it back again, and all this inside a transaction. And that scan it scales as well. What we do need to care about now when we design applications that is that we don't destroy the scalability. And so, so we always need to keep this in mind as we've been told yesterday as well. If you don't have a scalable data model then the scalable database doesn't, um, doesn't count anything. So before I'm going to talk about the application we designed. I want to give uh, some, like, some, some, present some of the features that the wiki or wiki text itself um, provides, because not all of you may know. 
there's, if you, if you edit the page or create a page, or view page is always the page title. Title is like uh, the, the index. This is where you can, uh, how you can retrieve pages and store pages. Then inside the um, uh, revision, you have certain features like links. You can always link to other pages. You probably know that. Then there's more advanced features like templates. Templates is some sort of inclusion. I want content of another page included in my page. And then there's categories. I can put pages into categories and have a look at the category and then it presents all the pages inside that category. We need to keep those features in mind when we design the application and the data model. Now we have certain operations we need to optimize our data model for, or design our data model for. This is the first the basic read. I want to view pages. Then there's an option where we can view different revisions of a page, like the history, what previous revisions had and what the differences are. So we need to keep this inside the database. You can always search for articles. Could be full text search or whatever. Then there's this tiny button. Um, we can view a random page. We, we're not only able to search for pages directly that we know or click through from the main page, but we can have arbitrary pages shown to us. And one feature that makes it a bit more difficult to design in the data model is the what links here. So for every page there is in the wiki, I can get a list of pages that have links to my page. Well, and if, if, I'm, if I want to edit the page, I cannot save it, of course. And different actions need to be done when doing those saves. So this is the wiki text we want to save. Um, when we hit that button, we need to do to execute multiple things atomically, so that all of them or none of them um, are stored. So this is at first the revision itself, so the current revision, the wiki text, the new text, and there is uh, some metadata about each page which we need to store. Then we need to store those links for the what links here. So for every link in the wiki text. We need to update or, uh, the database that there is a link from my page to this one. Or if I remove a link, I need to remove that. And then for the category pages, I must do almost the same. Like If I'm adding a category, I have to add my page to that category. If I'm removing my page from it, I need to remove that. And if it's a new page, um, well, there, there is a counter of some statistics of how many pages there are, and we need to update this. So all those things could be quite many, which we need to execute inside the transaction. So this is how the schema in uh, SQL looks like. We have those uh, metadata, uh, the, the page object, which is um, the, the page title, and uh, some restrictions on it, etc. Then we have uh, for each revision and entry in the revision table, the text is nowadays in a separate table, and so on. And the links of the table is, uh, of the pages are stored in a separate one too. But we don't want to have a look at this too much, or too long. This is, this is what we can design for us. We don't have several tables. We only have one key and values. So. We need to use some, some different mechanism to, to like, um, have, have something similar. And in this case, we're doing, using prefixes. We're prefixing our keys or uh, adding a suffix, uh, suffix to the end so we can distinguish sev uh, different keys. So we have um, one key for each namespace with a list of all pages in that namespace and a counter, of course, so we can access it quite um, quickly. And then for each page itself, the matter object, the, for each revision, an own object, and a list of revisions. And what makes it quite difficult is those links from one page to another for the what links here features, as well as the categories. 
So for each category title itself, we store at a single key a whole list of pages that are in there, or at least the page titles, not the whole page object. And we always need the counters because they have various functions where we can retrieve only the numbers, not the current entries. So what are the issues with this data model? Well, it's non-scalable. We have a central page list at the top where we store all page titles. This is a very big key and always needs to be updated when a new page is inserted. Um, same goes for the category pages as the backlinks. And this limits the scalability. It basically destroys what we have reached with the data model, or with, with the uh, database selection. We want to be scalable, but we cannot with this data model. But, but what can we do about this? Well, one solution is we can partition or shard those um, lists. And there are various ways to do that. We can um, spread all entries into over several partitions in, in random order. We don't count in which order they are spread. If, if I have a counter saying there are 10,000 pages in my wiki, then I can easily split that into 10 counters having a thousand as a number each. But this is not suitable for everything because uh, for those backlinks, we need to add pages and delete pages from the, those linked lists. And we do not want to go through every partition to do that. So we can instead use hashing to determine the, um, um, the partition an entry goes into. Like in here, we have a long page list. And we split it into three. And hashing determines which well you get into which partition. And now we can easily delete them. We know if, if I want to delete page one, I need to hash it, and I know which partition it is in, and then I can remove it from that partition again without even worrying about the other partitions. So before I'm going to show you some results, um, this is the architecture we thought of for the application. It's basically the user requesting a page from um, uh, some web server, for example, Tomcats. And those Tomcats are connected to any Scalaris node. Like Scalaris could be uh, hundreds of nodes connected with each other. And the Tomcats just request data from one of them. And they will serve you with the data, which is not necessarily stored on that node, but on any of them. So what is the effect we have before we partition the keys and after? Well, th this is a page edit. Like, I'm, I'm already having a page, and I'm just changing the contents. When I'm changing the contents, I can change links, and then those um, backlinks need to be updated. And this is very, very costly for the non-partition thing, as you can see in here. This is a benchmark on a 24-node system, I think. And the average execution time a query um, had. And for non-partitioning, it's around 200 milliseconds for doing an edit. And if we partition them into several groups, in this case, 25 partitions, we can get to a normal execution time around 50 milliseconds. And you, got, you can always see, also see the uh, parts. So this is the part that is spent inside Scalaris. So updating all those big lists takes a long time, of course. And when we, if we only have smaller lists, we use less time. And then there's time spent in Tomcat itself. This is for rendering pages and extracting those page lists and categories. Uh, the effect on the, of partitioning are even greater when creating pages. Because if we create a page, then we need to add the new page to the central page list. Remember, this is a single key for whole namespace. And it makes it even worse. See here is 2,000, uh, 2.5 seconds for a save. There's way too much. The users won't do that. And by partitioning those keys, uh, it's well, around well below 100. So, what have we gained in total? This is just edits and saves. What we wanted to do is have a scalable data store. 
So we need to have a look at scalability for increasing load or increasing the number of nodes in the system. So we have a rise number of nodes, uh, starting from 4 to 24. And as you can see, the more nodes you add to the system, the more requests you can serve per second. And it looks quite good. So it, it does scale. The scalability is not destroyed by uh, the data model we chose, although it is not optimal for scalability. We still have those page pages and, and those page lists, although we partitioned them. But it works. Yep. And now it's time for questions, if you have any. We have time for a couple of questions. Um, just one question about the latency introduced by the transactions. I mean, it mm -hmm. scales, but um, I think the, the range was different on the right side. Do you mean that? Or? No, no, really at the beginning when you showed the, the ah, yeah. random reads. Yes. This one. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, the, the read part is basically no transaction because you're only reading one key. Um, of course, transactions cost performance. So it cannot scale the same way as um, a non-transactional system. But it does scale. Like it, it linearly goes up. There's always a cost, but the... Uh, I understand. I'm not discussing the, the scalability. I'm just asking because I don't see the numbers on the left. So how much a transaction oh, yeah. costs? That's <laughs> the question. They're cut off, sorry. Um, so this is 80,000. But this is just reading once. Well, uh, this is 12,000. And this is uh, reading the value, processing it, and writing it again. So it's a double number of operations, as you can see. I'm going to the data store twice. Other questions? There's one. There's one. Uh, hi. I was when you when you showed the application architecture, I was mm -hmm. wondering if it would maybe make sense to put uh, to collocate one Scalaris node with each app server. Yeah, this is what we actually did for the oh, okay. uh, benchmarks. Because <laughs> um, we don't have that many servers in our clusters to bench. Uh, so the Tomcat node is on the same computer than the uh, Scalaris nodes. And, but you, you can then decide whether you want to pin that Tomcat to the own Scalaris instance or to any of them. And um, I think there was only a slight difference because it doesn't matter which Scalaris node I ask for the data, it still needs to route that request to the node that is responsible for the data. All right, let's thank the speaker again.